how awesome our God is. My God today, my God today. We bless God for today and bless God for Freedom Day and uh, how God has allowed us to get to this point. We come back to church, don't have to sign up. We can space out or we can sit together, have a way we want to do it, but we back up in here. Amen. Come on, give God some praise. I want to ask everyone who is present and those who are online to secure their communion uh, essentials, whether you have the cup or you have your own wafer, your own cracker, your own slice of bread, and your own juice. As this ceremony, this ordinance is something Jesus left for all believers to do an acknowledgement and recognition of the price he paid for our sins for all of our lives we're told by the, in the word of God as often as we do it we do show forth his death burial and resurrection you could do it every week you could do it every day we do it once a month some do it once a year However way you do it, you ought to do it in a reverence way, acknowledging the price that was paid for all of your sins and all of my sins, that God might get glory, honor, and praise. It is our custom to pray over the cup, over the wafer, most of all over the people. So if you can still yourself and bow your head wherever you are, whether you're in the sanctuary of this building or the sanctuary of your house, ask you to still yourself. And though worship can be convenient and comfortable, it still requires commitment. So let's commit this time if, for those even out on the grass. If you have your utensils, let us pray. God, how we love you, and we thank you for today. We thank you that you are a good, good Father. You're worthy of our highest praise. We remember what Jesus told us to do, and so here we are on this first Sunday in July. We ask your favor. We ask your blessings upon the cup that we're about to drink, the bread, the wafer we're about to eat. Most of, all, most of all, Father, I ask your favor and your blessings upon the souls that's about to participate. I pray that you forgive us of our sins as you promised you would. I pray that you would fill us afresh with your precious Holy Spirit as you promised you would. That as we eat and drink of this cup and this wafer with one another, we might sense a closer presence with you and with one another for the glory of God, for the growth of your kingdom, for the good of all mankind. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray, and we do give thanks. And the saints of God said amen. All right, with the cup in one hand, and the wafer in the other, unless you got a microphone. <laughs> I'm going to ask you, repeat after me. In obedience to the, in obedience to the word of God, in fellowship with the saints of God, in honor to the Son of God, we remember His first coming. We anticipate His second coming. We celebrate His presence here with this communion on purpose. Let us eat together. Let us drink together. I know it was a blood 
some of that, <laughs> how good the Lord is. To those, I want to invite you to turn to the Gospel of John, chapter 8. It's Freedom Day, and we're so grateful God has allowed us to experience something that we've taken for granted, perhaps. The freedom to worship. Yeah, the freedom to come to worship without fear of catching something or spreading something. The freedom to come to church and just worship God. Amen, amen. So I was led to this slice of scripture that I believe God got some great insight for all of us that we want to be free. And we want to live the free life. Listen to the word of God as we read here, beginning with the 31st verse. Said, then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? Jesus answered them, most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits a sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Look at somebody that's near you and ask them, are you living the free life? Go on talk about living the free life. God, come now. We need you. Let your Holy Spirit. ears that we might see here and receive your word on good ground. Speak to us, O oh God, on our level and in our language, that we might receive it and that we might continue to be the, per the person, the people you called us to be. Here I am, Lord. I can't do nothing without you, but I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You're free to be you and me right here, right now, today. Save souls wherever they may be. Draw them closer to you and closer to one another. In Jesus' name we pray. And we give thanks, and the saints of God said amen. amen. Living the free, the free life. Freedom 
is a natural desire, desire for every human being. Yeah. When we want, or we want rather, to secure in ourselves what we want is freedom and liberty to live the life we choose. Amen. Freedom is not given to us just because we're born or once we are born. Because as a kid, as a child, as an infant, we can't handle freedom. Freedom is something that we have to show we can handle. We come here needing people. We can't take care of ourselves. So we don't need and can't handle freedom as an infant. But as soon as we come to re recognize that there is a level of life that gives us choices that we can pick for ourselves, we want that. Amen. We, we learn how to walk. We, we want to walk. We learn how to talk. We, we want to talk. Don't let us get a learner's permit to drive. We want to drive. That whatever we think we are big enough, bad enough, smart enough, strong enough to do, we want the liberty to be able to do it. That's why the number one job, I contend, the number one job for parents and, and, and guardians is to give children, give them security, give them stability, and give them structure. Because when you give them those things, they are ready to handle freedom. Security so they can feel safe. Structure so they can have discipline. Stability so they can build on their lives so they can reach the level of greatness God has for them. The good news I have for you today is that God wants everybody to be free. God, let me preach. I said God wants everybody to be free. We live in a world that's always trying to take our freedom, always trying to take our liberty, always trying to find some reason to limit us as to what we can do. A world where people devalue other people because of their economics or because of their education, because of their culture or because of their color, sometimes because of their religion or because of their race. That Some people think that as a result, because of your color or your religion, that they have a right to take away from you the same liberty that they enjoy themselves. Can I say that too often we, we take freedom for granted until we lose it? Or when we are ignorant of the fact that we too are slaves and haven't been set free yet? We are duped into thinking, as we will see in the text today, that we already have freedom when in reality we are just uh, 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 slaves with a little privilege. But God wants everybody. I wish I could cut everybody that's here in this open right now and pour this into you. God wants everybody to be free. Yeah, God, God wants everybody to be free. As we celebrate Independence Day today uh, and having celebrated Juneteenth Day a few weeks ago, uh, we're, we're reminded that as a nation, we were not always recognized as an independent nation. And neither did we recognize each other as independent citizens of the same country. We classify some as citizens and some as three-fifths citizens. That as a nation, we had a right as any other nation, and as citizens, we have the rights as any other uh, our citizens, that the color of our skin, the accent of our voice, the amount of money we make, the school we attend to, or the way we worship does not determine citizenship in this country. And too often we equate independence with freedom. But again, I want you to know God wants us all to be free. I got to get to this text. God wants us all to be free. Uh, and, and freedom, but God's freedom and our freedom can be quite different. When we come to this text here, here in the 8th chapter, we see condemnation, illumination, and liberation. We see condemnation at the beginning where Jesus is out doing ministry, minding his own business. And while he's doing ministry, uh, uh, the religious leaders bring this woman that they caught in the bed with somebody she had no business being in the bed with, didn't bring him, but brought her and threw, him, threw her at the feet of Jesus, expecting Jesus to condemn her. Only to find out that when you go to point your finger at somebody else, you got three or four pointed back at you. 
And then they wanted to challenge Jesus after, the, she, after he released the lady. They wanted to challenge Jesus about how, how you are able to do what you do. And Jesus said, I am, don't you know who I am? I'm the light of the world. I, I illumine you. If you want to see, you need to get with me. But now as we draw closer to the text here, the text takes speaks about liberation. And see, we talk about 4th of July and our Independence Day. It talks about liberation just by who is free and who is not free. Look at some of these insights from the text here. Because Jesus says to those uh, Jews who believed in him, he lets them know that freedom, first of all, comes from being a disciple of Christ. Yeah, freedom comes from being a student of the Savior. Yeah, not, not necessarily from, from religion, but being committed to the precepts, principles, and practices of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, Jesus said, look, if you abide in my word, you are then my disciples indeed. Listen, the only way you get free, the only way you get independence is that you have to first embrace your dependence on God. I'll say that again, that before, the only way you can get independence is that you have to first, you have to first embrace your dependence on God. That if you don't embrace the fact that you need God, that God is not a piece of jewelry that you put on and you take off. God is not an attitude that you change every now and then. No, God is something like you really need, like the breath that you need. And if you don't breathe, you can't, you can't live. You've you got to embrace the fact that you need God, not just that you want God, not just that God is a good option, but that you need God. You depend it upon God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, look, if, if you really want really want to deal with freedom, that you have to abide in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. But then he, then he said that freedom not only, is, uh, fr freedom not only uh, comes from being a disciple of Christ, but freedom comes from knowing the truth. Maybe knowing the truth. I think that's why our nation is struggling so much at this season of our history. Because there's so much truth out there, at least man-made truth. And I hold the biggest, the biggest downfall of the last uh, uh, presidential administration is that it sowed this seed in our country that told people that you can create your own truth. And if you say it loud enough and long enough, you're going to get some people to believe your lie. Yeah, yeah, but, but, but freedom don't come from you and I making up our truth. Freedom comes from you and I embracing and knowing the truth. This shirt, I'm, I'm wearing today black and white. That's what it is, black and white. Now, you want to call it blue all you want to. You call it light purple all you want to. But it's black and white. But we're living in a day and time where people want to create their own truth. And Jesus said, look, you got to know the truth. One plus one equal two. It don't equal two and a half. It don't equal 2.1. One plus one equal two. There are certain absolute truths in this world that if you want to be free, you have to embrace the truth. He said, look. <laughs> You, you, you got to know the truth, and the truth will set you free. You want to know the truth? He said, look, th th I, 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 he told the disciples later, he said, look, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. And one of his disciples, Thomas, says, uh, 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 Lord, uh, how, how do we know the way? Where do we know the way? He said, look, I am the way, the truth, not a truth. But the truth. And, uh, and so if I am the truth, anything that's not me is not the truth. I'm trying to help somebody because we get stuck on making decisions. And here's what you got to know. If something ain't the truth, it just ain't the truth. You can color it up. You can fix it up. You can paint it up. You can spray it up. But a lie is still a lie. I don't care how you tell it. He said, if you want the truth, if you want freedom, you got to learn how to embrace the truth. Because all of us come up with a lie. Yeah. But then freedom is also, freedom also comes from recognizing your total history. 
Yeah, your total history, not your privileged history. Yeah, these, these, these Jews that Jesus was talking to, come on, Holy Spirit. These Jews that, 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 these, that Jesus was talking to, they were bragging when Jesus talked about uh, 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 you be free. Uh, and they started bragging about being part of Abraham's family. The, the great friend of God, the great father of faith. They, they, they were the bragging about that, that we have to be, we, we are not slaves. We are privileged people because we're connected to Father Abraham. And you need to embrace this if you want to be free, that just because your father is great don't make you great. Acts Rehoboam, the, the son of Solomon, his father was King Solomon, who served as 40 years as king, but Rehoboam couldn't be king for 40 days. Ask the prodigal son and his brother, whose father was great in grace and mercy and had a successful business, yet neither one of them Negroes can handle it. Coming from a great lineage don't make you great. Watch this. It simply means that you have greatness in you. You have the potential to achieve what others in the family have achieved, but just because you come out of the same family lineage don't make you great. That you got to work out yours just like they had to work out theirs. And they weren't arguing about, we are Abraham descendants. We've never been in bondage. You, we, 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 how could you say you're going to make us free? The, the, these folks struggle with what we are wrestling with today. They have selective memory. They said that they were Abraham's descendants and that they had never been free. I mean, they had never been enslaved. They forgot. The Abraham family was the family that Pharaoh held captive and Moses had to set free. They forgot how Abraham's family was held 40 years in the wilderness. They forgot that after God kept his promises and gave them the promised land, their foreparents forgot their promise to keep his word. And God allowed them to be taken into captivity several times, even expelling them from the promised land. They forgot how Abraham's descendants became slaves to the very people that they had defeated in the past. They forgot how they were living under another country's government even as they were talking to Jesus. They're living under the Roman regime because they had broken a deal with Rome to pay taxes and to honor Roman leaders, and they were given a certain level of freedom, a certain level of privileges, and so they said they always been free. Sound like some people of our day who live under the umbrella of racial, gender, and social privileges and then try to act like they free indeed, and that they and they people have always been free. And y'all need to get y'all stuff together. These religious people said to Jesus, we had never been in bondage to anybody. They claimed to have always been free and never uh, been without it. But they failed to recognize that they were not currently free. And Jesus had to tell them, and I'm trying to help somebody here recognize when you're not free, that, that you can't live your best life locked up. You can't live your best life limited. You can't live your best life with somebody else always having to tell you everything to do. Jesus said, most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits a sin is a slave of sin. So we got to embrace this fact that in order for us to have freedom, for us to have independence, first of all, I told you, we must embrace our dependence on God. That until we learn that we are dependent on him, we can never be free from anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because, uh, freedom comes from our dependence on God. And, and it's only when I totally rely on him and trust in him that I live in the freedom of life that's meant for me. Freedom begins with our dependence on God. But then freedom comes from us embracing our inner dependence on others. Yeah, everybody needs somebody. None of us are all of us, but all of us are some of us. We need other people. 
We need saints. We need sinners. We need family members. We need neighbors. We need our parents. We need our grandparents. We need our children. We need our grandchildren. Freedom comes from knowing that I don't have it all and I don't know it all and I do need God, but I also need people. And our independence that we ought to celebrate today and our inner independence that Jesus spoke of in our text is our independence not from God and not from people, but he speaks of our independence and freedom from sin. Help me preach Holy Ghost. Freedom from the penalty of sin. For the wages of sin is death. The price for engaging in behavior that goes against God is not a bad weekend. It's not a hangover. It's not just some guilty feelings. But the price for going against the standard of God, the price for missing the mark that God has set for us is death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and Jesus, God wants us to be free from the penalty of sin. That's why he came. He came to pay that that price that's too high for you and too high for me. I don't care how much money we have. I don't care where we live. I don't care what we have in our 401K or what we have in pensions. It's way too high for you and I to pay the wages of sin. But he wants us to be free from the penalty of sin, but he also wants us to be free from the power of sin. You see, before you come to know God, before you surrender your life to God, you do wrong because you can't help it. You can't help it. You can't, can't help it. Well, I used to get so mad at myself before I, guess, before I was saved. I used to get so mad at myself with the lies I would tell. So why are you telling that lie? That's just so unnecessary. You didn't have to say all of that. Why are you tell all that lie? Just, we got them all upset. Why are you tell all? I mean, I would just lie, 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 lie. And then I would cuss. I would, why you gotta, why you got to say all of that? Why you got to use a whole paragraph of bad words? Yeah. Come on, one or two words is fine enough. Why you, every time you open your mouth, you, get, you, you just got to say something. What, shut up, boys. I, I literally, I, I'd never forget this. Literally, before I even invited God into my life, I remember getting frustrated with myself because I was cussing so bad. It's one of the ways I knew I was saved. <laughs> once, I got, once I got saved, I stopped doing all that for a long time, but you know. <laughs> but, but listen, 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 listen. I come to grips with the fact that God set me free from the power of sin so that now when I lie or when I cuss, it ain't because I have to. I wish I had a witness here. That disciples of Christ, we do wrong when we do wrong. Ain't he talking about I couldn't help it? I couldn't. The devil made no, the devil is a lie. The devil didn't make you do it. At that moment, you chose to do it. And, and Jesus, Jesus wanted, and Paul hits on this as well. Jesus wants us to know that you become a slave to anything you commit to. Hello, somebody. Whatever you commit to, that's what you become a slave of. I, in the presence of God, and many of you, became a slave of Sandra Glass. When I married her, I committed myself to living with her. I committed myself to taking care of her. That was my commitment. And, and, and she became a slave to me. Because whatever you commit to, now, let me help some people who try to be too spiritual with this thing because I'm going to show you how big of a, of a slave you are. You, you, you know, he, I told you, whatever you commit to, you, you're a slave to. Well, Jesus said that. Whatever you commit to and what you're a slave to. So, so now, when, when you commit to a lie, not if you lie, but when you lie, 
You have to get that lie from somewhere, from somebody, because you don't own a lie. No, no, no. You, in order for you to own something, you got to create it out of your own material. If you use somebody else's material, you owe them. You're committed to them. So when, whenever we tell a lie, we have to get that lie from the father of lies. And in that moment, then, we are a slave to the lie and a slave to the father of lies. And so much a slave to the lie that we know once we tell that lie, we got to tell five, six others to cover that one. And what, 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 all, what all Jesus really wanted them to, to do, and when you read Romans chapter 6, Paul talks about, in Romans chapter 6, Deacon Rowry, about, about us uh, 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 getting power over sin, that we are not to, to give our members, not to give our tongue, our eyes, our, 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 our body members over to sin. So don't let sin reign. Don't let sin control your life because you have a choice in the matter. Yeah, you, you, you have a choice. You have a choice to the matter because whatever you do, I told you, you, you become a slave. And he, he said, don't, don't let sin control you. You control it. Yeah, you, you got you, you to gotta understand, gotta understand who, who a slave is. And a slave is anybody who's committed to doing something that's outside the will of God. Uh, and you become a slave to that. You, that, 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 that. A drunk is a slave to alcohol. A liar is a slave to lies and the father of lies. A cheat is a slave to cheating and dishonesty. Whatever you do, you are a slave to that. Yeah, but, but Jesus said, Jesus, a, a, a slave, a slave, a slave uh, uh, not only is committed to what the sin they, they practice, but a slave does not abide, do, don't have the right to stay in the house forever. That the slave, the servant, get a chance to come in the house. Watch this. And work in the house. But a slave can't live in the house. A slave got to go back to the slave quarters. He said once we become slaves, we lose our privilege to stay in the house. What house? The house of God. The house of God. You, you're not free if you can't dwell, if you can't live, if you can't stay in the house of God, the house of God, where is that? Is that this building? No, we learned last year through COVID that this building ain't the house of God. It's the house where the house where the people of God come together and worship. But 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 the house of God is the place where God dwells. It's, it's where God's presence is. Yeah, it's where God's presence is. And, and, and once you commit to sin, then you don't feel right staying in the house of God. You, that's why you feel bad sometimes coming in here. That's why some folks skip church this Sunday because it's communion Sunday. And they don't want to drink communion after they drank uh, 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 Crown Royal or whatever they drunk last night. No, 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 no. The slave, no, you can't stay in the house. You can't. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, uh, the slave can't. We can't abide in the house forever. But I, I praise God that the slaves, slaves, slaves may come in. They, they have to go out because they can't stay in, stay in the house. But I praise God that Jesus concluded this. And I'm just about done with you today when he said, look, he whom the Son set free is free indeed. That God wants us to be free. I mean, God really wants us to be free. He don't want us to have to always carry the burden of our sin. He, he don't want us to always have to worry about where things are coming from. He don't want us to always have to worry about how we're going to get out the mess that we're in. That when you got a heavenly father who takes care of you, when you have God as your shepherd, you have everything that you want. He wants you to be free. He, he really wants you, wants you to be free, but you won't be free if you don't embrace him as your savior. You won't be free if you don't embrace him as your God. And listen, he said, whom the son set free is free indeed. While the slave can only stay in the house so long and have to get out, if the slave happened to hook up with the son in the house, 
then the slave get the same privileges as the son. I wish I had a witness here. You, you done had kids over your house. You done had kids that, that been at your house that uh, 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 you wonder who this kid is, but then your junior tell you, that, oh, that's my friend. That's, that's my schoolmate. And because that's your child's friend, they get access to your house. They get access. That's all, that's all Jesus is saying here, that when you get a hold of the son, when you allow Jesus to become your friend, when you allow Jesus to be in your life, you get access to the house. You get access to the Father. You get access to all that's in the house. God wants us to be free. He, he wants us to live in this freedom. When we live in the freedom God has for us, we embrace the fact that we are unique creatures. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. We're different on purpose. We're different on purpose. Don't have to be like nobody. Ain't got to walk like nobody. Ain't got to talk like nobody. I'm different on purpose. God made me different and I embrace my, when I'm living the free life, I don't have to try to be like anybody else. I can just be myself. When I'm living the free life, I have life abundant life. I, I'm not scared about that. I'm not stingy about that. I don't just barely get by. All I know is that I have everything that I need. Everything. I may not have everything that I want at the moment, but I have everything that I need. That when I hit the rewind button of my life and look back over all I've been through, all I know is that every day of my life, God has made a way out of nowhere. Every day of my life, my cup has ran over. Every day of my life. He put joy inside my tears. All I know is that when I'm free, I live the abundant life. I live the more than enough life because I have El Shaddai living with me. But when you're living the free life, it means I have access to the house of God and everything that's in the house. I got love. I've got peace. I've got joy. I've got patience. I've got strength. I've got kindness. I've got self-control. I've got access to everything that's in the house. That whatever I need, my God will supply. I'm free. I'm free to love. I'm free. I'm free to have joy. I'm free. I'm free to have peace. The pastors all understand, I'm free from all fear. I'm free from all lack. I'm free from lack of self-control. I'm free from sin. I'm free from the penalty of sin. I'm free from the power of sin. I'm free because the Son has set me free. As I extend this invitation, the good news is, <laughs> the good news is that I know a man who's able to set you free. If you're not living in freedom, God wants you free. You can be free, but not until you show your dependence on him who made you to be you. That when we surrender ourselves to God, God gives us a freedom that blows our mind. A freedom not just to be good, but a freedom to be great. A freedom to find his plan that he has for us and a freedom to live out that plan. It's not freedom from storms. It's not freedoms from the attack of the enemy. But here's something else you're free from. You're free from loneliness. Oh, yeah, when, when you have him, you're free from loneliness because he's always with you. Oh, yeah, he's always with you. Even when you don't think he's there, he's always with you. When the enemy comes and surrounds you all around, you think you're going down. No, because he's with you. Even when it looks like the fire going to burn you up, no, because he's with you. Even when it looks like the lion's about to eat you up, no, because he's with you. That you don't ever have to worry about being alone. It gives you the ability to live the free life. It's the last thing I say on this before I give this invitation. 
He wants you to have the free life because there's some other folks in your life that need the free life. And they need to see freedom in you. Which means you can't live like a slave. You can't keep doing the dumb stuff. And when you do it, you just got to own it. So, okay, I did it. I did it. I shouldn't have did it. I know I shouldn't have went to that casino. I know. I said I wasn't going to go back, but I did it. And own it. Don't, don't blame it on the devil. Just own it. Because see, in us, in me owning my mess, in me owning my, my mess, it, it don't make God look bad. No, no, no. There, 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 there's this passage in, in 2 Corinthians where, where he talks about we have this treasure, the Holy Spirit of God. We, we have this treasure, this precious, priceless piece of God in an earthly vessel. It speaks of God being inside of our bodies and our bodies being cracked, our bodies having holes in it, our bodies are leaking, if you will. And Paul says we have this really valuable treasure inside this cracked pot and because the pot is cracked is the only reason that the treasure inside can get outside so that God is seen through the crevices and the cracks of our weaknesses not that we don't stop working to be better and stop working to be our best self but quit crucifying yourself because you messed up Quit beating yourself up because you slipped up again. Some things God take away from you right away just like that. Other things he wean you off of. And then some things, some things he leave with you. Oh, yeah, he leaves some things with you. Paul, when you tell him, Paul said, look, I asked you, could you please take this away from me? So I fasted and prayed three times. God, take this away from me. Don't make me look good. Don't make me look religious. Don't make it look like I really know you. God said, no, no, no. No, I'm going to leave that thorn in you. I'm going to leave that affliction in you because, one, it's going to keep you humble. If I took everything from you, you think you're better than everybody. I'm going I'm to leave this with you because this will keep you humble. But then this also will allow you to depend not on your strength, but on my grace. Not on your smartness, but on my grace. Not on your skills, but on my grace. And my grace is sufficient. Extend the invitation now for those who are in the building, on the grass, outside, or online. We're so grateful that God has allowed us to experience the freedom to come back to worship, celebrating all day long, all week long, all to celebrate the rest of your life because you didn't have to do it. But as the praise team get ready to sing the song, I want to encourage you if you're out of church, unsaved, need a relationship with God, hey, how about this? You just want to be free. Come. Thanks for tuning in. Subscribe to this YouTube page for more videos. You can also catch us every Sunday morning, 9 a.m. on Facebook Live. Or you can catch us on our website at www.lbethel.com where you can register to come visit us here in Redford, Michigan. Listen, if you were blessed by this ministry, by this message today, then won't you consider giving? By mail, you can mail it in, or you can use Cash App, or you can use Givelify. We're there also. But know this, we can't wait to connect with you again. Peace.